video demonstrates how to do a buttonhole on the Bernina sewing machine using the buttonhole gauge. So when you're taking on a button and buttonhole, you need to be sure and determine your buttonhole, first of all, is the correct size for your button. You also need to determine which direction your buttons are going. Now this should be predetermined on your pattern. Just remember the horizontal buttons are usually at the top of garments or somewhere that holds pressure like a collar or the top of a shirt or on a waistband of trousers. The vertical buttons that go in this direction um, you would see down the front of blouses and coats and things. Um, also often when the button is bigger you might be more inclined to see um, horizontal buttons. So once you've determined uh, the direction of your button and the placement, which would really be done on the pattern, you might wanna just double check the size of the button. In this case, our button is two and a half centimeters. So we need to be sure that our buttonhole marking is that length. So I've marked that to be two and a half to fit the button. So what I would recommend is taking a scrap bit of fabric and measuring out, for example, in this case, the two and a half and cutting it just to check the button will fit through that measurement. So it does depend on the depth of the button. So how thick the button is. If, if this one is fairly flat, so if, if I cut two and a half centimeters, the exact uh, width of that button, the button should push through. But you can see there's a little bit um, of a push to get that through that space. That's what you want it to be like. You want it to be just a slight push on your buttonhole as when you're first putting your button through as the hole will uh, wear with time and widen. So some buttons can be quite rounded, even more uh, rounded than this, in which case they can have quite a, a height. And when your button has a height, it adds to the width that the hole needs to be able to open. To, uh, because it needs to fit the width of the button, but also then the height of the button. So sometimes you have to add a little bit extra. So just be careful when you measure your button. Don't always assume it's exactly the same width as, as your button itself. You might need to add a millimeter or two to be sure that that button will get through the hole. Another thing to check before you start in doing your button and button hole is that the fabric that you're doing your button hole on has been fused, that it has two layers and that, that the fabric has, this case here, is, um, fusible interfacing. Um, so something that gives it a bit of body uh, and thickness. So to start to create a buttonhole on the Bernina 1008 machine, you can attach a buttonhole gauge foot. This foot has a little red slider that can measure out the length of the button. So in this case, down to two and a half centimeters there. So that can help. And so it helps you stay in line and kind of create the rectangular shape of the buttonhole. There are also, if you don't have one of those at home, um, you might have it on your machine, just another kind of a regular foot. Looks similar to regular foot, but underneath it has two grooves and that slides over the little bumps that the buttonhole makes. And so it helps you uh, get the buttonhole sewn. And so this is also a buttonhole foot. So once you have your buttonhole gauge foot on the machine, you're nearly ready to start your buttonhole. What you want to look at on the machine and find is the buttonhole function knob. So on this machine, it's here. So you can see there's a little symbol. So it, it will be in different places on different machines. Uh, sometimes it's up at the top somewhere. Or sometimes there's one knob that has lots of different things including the stitch width and various things and on that one knob you'll see this symbol. So on the Renina here we have it as a separate knob. Basically what you're going to do is move this knob from one function to the next. Notice the way things on the machine move around. So the machine itself once you engage this um, controls different parts of the uh, machine and sets uh, different functions. So the only thing you really need to do is adjust the stitch length at the beginning. 
So the stitch length you need to put right up close to zero. The stitch length on the buttonhole determines how close the stitching is together. So you see this symbol, this represents the buttonhole. So when you're stitching down along this side, the machine is doing a little zigzag like over and back. So if the stitch length is longer, the stitches will be wider apart like that. So they, they, we want the stitches to actually be close together, um, which is called a satin stitch. And so that is achieved by moving this stitch length knob up closer to zero. Now just be a little bit careful because if you go all the way to zero, the machine will not move forward. It means that there's no stitch length. It's just stitching on top of itself. And so you might think something's wrong with the machine or the buttonhole foot, but actually it's just that you've put the stitch length too small. So I'm ready to go now. My stitch length is just up next to zero and I'm going to start with my first stitch, which will be this one on the left hand side coming down the side of the buttonhole. So I move this to one. Okay, notice the needle moves. So always do a test buttonhole on a bit of fabric before you go to do your final one on your garment. Because for example, I'm not sure now I've got my stitch length close to zero, but I'm not sure if it's exactly right. So um, I'll do a little test here. to be just a tiniest bit closer, a little bit more satin. So I'm stopping, nearly stopping now. You can see the red mark there is just about to line up with the red pointer there. So now I'm going to stop. I'm going to move this knob to second position. What the second position does is sew you back to your starting position. Which might seem a little strange and it is unusual the Bernina machine has this function. Most other buttonholes that I've ever used on a different machines just continue in the square shape. This one brings you back and then you start again kind of. So each time you change the function you need to be sure the needle is up out of the machine because the machine is moving it around and you don't want it to be stuck in the fabric when it moves. It could rip the fabric or damage the needle. So just either press with your foot on the pedal so that it, it comes up or use your manual uh, feed knob. So I'm now moving the buttonhole dial to position number three. So number three is a bar tack. So it is the wider stitch at the end of the button. So I usually count about six of them. That's usually about good. And I'm now moving the dial position number four. So four is actually the same as one. It does the zigzag stitch all the way along um, on the other side of the buttonhole. The main thing is just to be sure that you keep that second side straight. Usually the first side and the stitching back and the bar tack is all fine. It's this next step if anyone was to go wrong on the buttonhole. It's usually here. So you do need to make sure that the stitching is um, on the second side is in line with this stitch line here. So that's on the Bernina, that's what this stitch line is for. It's supposed to be a guide to help you now with this step. Okay, so you can see where the stitching is. There's like about two millimeters in between the stitching and the first zigzag stitch on the left hand side. <laughs> So at the moment I'm stitching from this stitch line. My stitching is going kind of this way, zigzagging, and I'm leaving this little bit of space in between. So again, the 
little red dot here is lined up with my marker. And so I'm going to stop. I'm going to move this dial to number five, position number five. So five is the same as three, it's a bar tack. Six, and like that. Um, that's usually enough. And I'm going to move this to position six. Position six is a funny one on the Bernina. It literally just knots the thread, so you just stitch a couple. And it just kind of knots it. Most machines do not have this function. So, but it's no harm. Just do the knot. Then just remember to move the, the dial back to zero so that your machine is reset to stitching again. So that completes our buttonhole. Pull that out. And there we have it. That's the back of the buttonhole. The front. So the next thing you want to do is open the buttonhole so that your button can get through. So, th so there's a few different ways of doing this. You can um, take the button like this and snip it with a nice sharp scissors. So you've got a little opening there and you can just trim or sorry, snip all the way up to one end and not the other end. Alternatively, you can put a pin on one end like this and use a ripper and rip up along. The pin is there to stop the ripper going all the way through. Always put that pin in. Many times I've seen people rip right the way through their garment. So do the other side. And when you're ripping, what you want to do is be careful not to catch any of the threads, which I actually have here, so that's a good example of what not to do. So I ripped like that and I caught in a little bit far and you see the threads uh, rip out, okay? So um, that basically undoes your buttonhole, so uh, you want to avoid that. So it can be a delicate thing. There's, You want to leave enough space in between the buttonhole so that you can do this step here. You don't want to leave too much um, space so that when you um, open it there's a lot of uh, fabric in between so there's a kind of a delicate balance. Now here you can see there's just a couple of threads I usually kind of pull like that so I can get them um, and then snip them get rid of them. If you do snip like I have there by mistake you can uh, patch up your button holes. You would have to place it back in in the exact position. So you can see I stitched that bit and it patched it up fairly fairly well. Um, so it may be no harm to just to show you what to do if you did accidentally cut into the um, buttonhole itself. So best of luck with your buttonholes.